All right, it is time. Thank you. So let's. Uh, we have another public hearing. Kim, can you uh, do roll call and, and read the, the notice? Commissioner Supla. Here. Commissioner Lambert. Here. Commissioner Rattel. Present. Administrator Bruner. Here. Attorney Baxter is absent. And Kim Purcell, Montezuma County Clerk and Recorder. Notice is hereby given that the Montezuma County Commissioners will hold a public hearing for the purpose of reviewing and determining an AR 10-34 and AR 3-9 rezoning request and sketch plan for a proposed two lot moderate subdivision on property owned by Keith Evans, located at 10659 Road 26, Cortez, Colorado, consisting of 28.39 acres more or less, situated north of Cottonwood Street, west of Road 26, located in section 23, Township 36 North, range 16 West, NNPM. The hearing will be held Monday, August 8, 2016, 1.45 p.m. Commissioner's Hearing Room, District Courthouse, 109 West Main, Cortez, Colorado. Interested persons may attend and give input. Information may be obtained from the Planning Office, Room 305, District Courthouse, Cortez, Colorado, or accessed online at http montezumacounty.org, Web Departments Planning. You may also contact the Planning Department at 970-565-2801 with questions. This file can be inspected in the Planning Department during regular office hours. Dated this 22nd day of July, 2016, Kim Purcell, Clerk, Board of County Commissioners, Montezuma County, Colorado, published in the Cortez Journal on Tuesday, July 26, 2016. Thank you, Kim. Keith, would you, John, want to come up to the table? Okay. Leanne, if you'd go ahead and fill us in um, with the Planning and Zoning Board. And Absolutely. Thank you, John. Hi, Keith. Good to see you again. Good to see you again. John. Good to see you again. You're becoming a regular, man. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's moved in. <laughs> we ran our offices. <laughs> <laughs> this one was actually reviewed by the Planning Commission uh, as well on July 14th. We moved Mr. Evans to the beginning of the agenda because he had some prior obligations. Um, we had uh, a couple people show up a few minutes after he had already left, um, and that's the letter that you were given. That, that was their submission, the Waters' letter. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, the Planning Commission, um, they reviewed uh, access from Road 26, it's in that potential, which there's no plans in place for that at this time. Um, not that they won't be in the future, but um, then there was also discussion about annexing into the city. Mr. Evans said that, that had that those discussions had taken place a long time ago, but nothing's really come to fruition there. The city of Cortez did uh, submit a letter that they are not opposed to to this application and it doesn't they're actually in favor of it of course it expands that here um, natural area. Um, it's it's within, within that commercial and industrial overlay area of, of the county. So the commissioners, the planning commission uh, recommended the Board of County Commissioners approve uh, the AR 3 to 9 and AR 10 to 34 uh, rezoning and the sketch plan for the proposed development. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can um, talk a little bit more about uh, is this land going to be annexed? Is there talk, still talk of it being annexed? No. Every every few years they bring it up, and I think I'm going to get it, and I don't hear, hear from it for another four or five years. So. Mm -hmm. Is this? Are you cutting off Keith your storage unit section? That's basically yeah, what that's, you're cutting off that storage unit. That's essentially what's. Because you have access off 26 into that unit, so yes. you don't need an access. Right, it's already no, got I, access to the property, I right? Don't need any additional access? Right. Um, the access that we're talking about is not going to be for cars or there's not going to be a parking lot required or anything. It's mm -hmm. just to get people that live to the uh, east here a uh, way to get back to the gear place without riding on the streets and stuff. So, gotcha. And we'll preserve that kind of wetlands area that mm -hmm. runs through there too. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, any additional discussion? Commissioners? All right. We'll open it, at this time, we'll open it up to public comment. If you have a comment, state your name and your address, and we're all ears. <laughs> I 
My name's John Howard Kuykendall. I'm at 10817CR26. And his easement through there, it shows to be his. I don't know how he got it in his name when it was just an easement originally. But uh, I am concerned about future use of that easement. This right here. But your property is north of that? My property is right here. Mm -hmm. And what is that? A utility easement or a road easement? What kind of an easement is that? Can you it's a road easement. Road easement? Yeah. And it was part of the property line. When you bought it, the easement was already there. Yeah. There is a water easement for the piece that's just south of that. That runs. There's a lane from the from uh, 26 all the way back to uh, 40 acres in the back. Mm -hmm. And it's flat. Yeah. yeah. What's your concern with that easement, uh, Mr. Well, he's already having surveys come in and done, so he can get a road put in there. Or whatever. I had to have surveys to do the easement. So that's why they were surveyed. But my shed's in the spot where it is and it's going to stay there. It's been there since the road was gravel. So we have a, a conflict with the building and an easement? Uh, in our driveway, we drive into our house, there's a road there. <laughs> oh, your driveway's where the road easement is? Yeah. And the neighbors right here. Who's actually the owner of that property? You are? Yeah. So you guys access your property and the other name, oh, what happened? Yeah, I was trying to read clear. And the other neighbor accesses it on that. That's that easement, yes. Been there since before dawn of time. Um, I don't want to, this is not the place I would be arguing about this. This is really separate from the issue of this subdivision. But Harold and I did have the conversation before he bought that property that his driveway was on my property as surveyed. Um, he volunteered to move his shed, and no. I told him there was no big rush on it. No, right? did not. And since then, he's um, expanded his use of my property to access his. And I was concerned all along that it would come down to an argument that he'd been historically using that. But he knew what the plot of the property was, the property line was, where no. it was. And so did the other neighbors. And, uh, my only concern with it, and um, I have had it surveyed three different times since I've owned it here. Had it changed? To establish where the property lines are. And I'm happy if the neighbors want to survey there, establish their property lines, put up a fence, I'm fine with that. So, my only concern if I ever do sell the place and the people that want to buy it want to use that for access, that they maintain that they can still continue to use it. And uh, they might want to clean it up and dress it up a bit. Go out there now, you can see there's a lot of junk cars and stuff all around there. You know, so. This really doesn't have any play in It doesn't have any, here, so right. really nothing to do with this, with this subject. But they said, as at this time, you know, easement is necessary, and that's what I'm. There is an easement platted on on this property. Um, as, so as far as your access in here, there, I mean, you, you're more than welcome to step over here and look at this a little bit. Here. Um, that is an access and utility easement. 
Yeah, there's electric, gas, and that lane as well, I suppose. Right. So that's, I mean, that's, that's platted on, on the subdivision plan, so it's not going to go anywhere. As far as your shed being on his property or, or whatever that is, um, that, that's kind of, I mean, we go by the survey and what's on the survey. Those, those is his property all the way to the road? I mean, do you own all, own yeah, the, road you, all the way down? Yeah, you can see that. When it was an easement that's originally, just an easement. As far as the history of it, that would be something. I mean, the surveyors go back through and, and get the last, you know, the last deeds and, and go by those property descriptions. Um, what it was, you know, in 1935, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure, um, but it's something that, um, you know, we can look into or go back and look up. Um, so that's that is your concern. But looking at it right now, I mean, if you can see that property lane, it goes straight to the road like that and flagpoles right there. So yeah, he actually owns that access. It goes out to road 26 according to him. When it was an ease easement originally. Well, and I think, you know, and I don't know how many handshake deals or, or whatever deed agreements there were through through that time, but that access for you guys is, is it's on this on there. It's flat. So it's, it's not gonna go away. Is that a shed thing? Oh no there's <laughs> since road twenty six was gravel it's been there. Well, I talked to the person who put it there. Mm -hmm. And it shows it in that picture um, being on the outside of that line. If you used to blow up that picture, it shows it being on my property side of that line. But he's <coughs> decided to put up a fence other, elsewhere. Okay, our lines are, are definitely not survey grade lines at all. Um, we, we we have a very big disclaimer on our website that says, um, "Yeah, this is not this is not legal, legally binding here." So um, I'm, I'm not exactly sure if the line is darker or moved. I mean, an eighth of an inch. Um, it can make a lot of difference just visually, but um, we do the best we can to, to put those on there as we go through the construction of it. So where's the road going to go into the subdivision? There's Down on the bottom? Mm, no. The the easement actually... It's a, it's a little confusing. We use the word mm -hmm. easement and people think so we're really, talking about okay, a right-of-way. We're talking yeah. about access. <laughs> this is the access. Okay, but, that, the, but, it, but the, your portion of it would end yeah but this is where we pull in and pull yeah. out and maybe two and right but that's when the, it's platted here but then he's also got the utility easement that goes this way as well all the way to the back of it not necessarily for public right of way so all these people are going to be pulling in our driveway to go back there no no no, no, no. That's, no. It's, no. they're wanting to do a bike trail that's what yeah. the thing. This, it's but not when they when we say easement, we're talking about a conservation easement that's going on this property and this swath. It's not an easement for access no. to everybody for else. everybody to go through. Um, but later on, it's going to be it's on only this. Only Never it has nothing to do with this. Has nothing to do yeah. with this. Doing what we're doing is we're separating this from this. This will be public access, and this won't. So that's why we're separating. But it. not vehicles. Right. No, no motor. Just okay. bikes and walking. Just, just, you know, this walking one, you know, my grandkids play right here in the, no. out there in the yard. It, it, none of this access, its mm -hmm. use won't change. It'll, and it, I'll try not to use these words. Okay. So this on access the won't. map up here, the yellow part, people, people on their bikes would only be in the yellow part. They can't. Is, it, is that what we're saying? Is, is that why that is so shaded like that? No, no not even that. that. That is not, that, that's what's in sewer line. That, that's yeah. just the it's, part that doesn't have anything to do with It's enough. just this okay. surveyed section okay. on, on the plat. Okay. There's wetlands area right. there. So this yellow stuff doesn't mean anything like no. that? No. Okay. no. If you look at this, you can see how it is. How it is. So yeah. this is the section that already has trails on it? Yeah, we have it. Okay, so then road 26 is right here, and what we're doing is allowing biking to go in this section only, as written to the conservation easement. This and so this remains. Where the storage sheds are? No, this or is the storage shed. This is where I live. 
This is the wetlands. This is the storage shed there. And this is the drainage. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen it on the paperwork. I, I'm sorry, uh, it's a little confusing with all the easement yeah. forms in there. Um, but your access, as far as your driveway, your driveway is. Yeah, we pull right flat. in there. Yeah. Yeah. The rest of it is that 30, was it 33 feet, we believe? Yeah. Right here? Yeah, that goes the rest of the. Did you guys bring this up at the planning and zoning meeting? No, we didn't. He wasn't he was there. out of town. He worked out of town. And this is. But, but really, they're, they're unrelated okay. issues. They're, they're, they're yeah, unrelated but there's two. items. I mean, mm -hmm. I think you got confused that they were going to be using where you have your driveway. Well, with all the. the Surveyors for, coming for part in. Of the access to the biking trail and stuff. Yeah, and it's like, completely what's going back on? to the south of, of your driveway down where Keith's driveway comes off to his house. And well, it states in there not at this time, that easement. So, for context on what we're doing, and perhaps it'll be a little helpful if not, just stop me. Um, we're the term easement is quite confusing because we're talking about just a conservation easement, which has absolutely nothing to do with your access easement or your right of way. So we're putting a conservation easement on the 40 acres that have the bike trails on it currently, and then an additional 10 acre swath that runs through both pieces of Keith's place. To connect this 10 acre piece with the 40, we had to go through a formal survey for Keith's entire property because we're separating this away from the rest of it. So that's why you've seen surveyors out there. We're not including access in terms of the conservation easement, which is really what we're talking about, on the driveway that, that you're referring to. The conservation easement is just where that drainage is and then the 40 acres. <coughs> and we just had to go through a full survey process to get to the point of seeing where everything is. So that's why you've seen surveyors out there. <clears throat> and any change, any change in use, or, or if anything is proposed in the future, even a small parking area off of Route 26, <coughs> pardon me, to use to access that, will still have to go through. We'll have to amend what we have here, which will require another cost cost. So you'll. The, the conservation easement wouldn't even allow a parking lot, so that's not even an issue. All I can say is they. This is the second time they've been in here, and what they're saying is all of has been presented to us. There hasn't been anything different presented. So. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Is there anybody else? Yes, sir. Just come up and state your. Come up here, sir. I get to use this, this thing. It's just the oh. speaker. Oh, it's just the speaker. Can you just state your name? And your yeah, name? I'm Keith Hutchison, and uh, I live at 10669 Road 26. Here's just uh, to, uh, I border on these oh. two, uh, right? I'm right here. And uh, so <coughs> I border Are you on that. right next to the easement, or you live Yeah, the I'm right next to it. and. Uh, all I can say is hallelujah. I'm I'm absolutely all for it. I uh, I'm an avid hiker. I have been for about 25, 30 years, and uh, I hike about 1,200 miles a year. And a lot of that is in the Carpenter area and all the New Gear area out there. And I've been having to drive on around to where the flagpole was at back in there. I did that for a long time. So this will allow me to walk right out of my house and. Uh, you know, walk uh, right down the trail and uh, makes things a lot simpler. And uh, I think uh, uh, what Keith Evans has done with the, all of this property is uh, a marvelous, wonderful thing for Cortez. I don't think enough can be said about it. Uh, in the long run, over the next uh, 50 or 100 years, people are going to look back at this property and say, wow, here's somebody who really did something worthwhile for the community. I feel real strongly about that. 
And uh, this is, uh, just seems to me to be such a natural uh, right across there for all the folks that bicycle and, and uh, hike from on this side. It's a lot easier to get to from uh, the other side or if you're, say, on Market Street or something, you can come down and cut across the carpenter in there. But uh, for the gear area and all of that area, this easement really makes beautiful sense. And so I'll have it add. All right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Didn't need that much. <laughs> Is there any, anybody else who would like to speak or against the proposed rezoning? All right, we'll bring it back to the table for discussion with the uh, commissioners. Any additional discussion? I have no problem. So it looks like it's good to me. What's going on there? Did we want to discuss at all um, with Mr. Evans the, 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 the Waters letter? Sure. Why don't you bring up the Waters letter? Okay. It was uh, kind of confusing to me. What? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Well, I think with it being in that commercial industrial overlay, which is where the Waters' property is located as well. Um, back here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this property as well as this property are going to be involved in the conservation easement part of it. So the Waters they were concerned about this border of their property here. Apparently there was an issue where there was some agricultural burning going on during a bike race and it caused some issues. So they were requesting that a, some sort of buffer for trails be put in to where um, their ag or their commercial, their commercial uses aren't going to impact the bike people. So I, that's not the way the letter reads. That it says if there is a buffer, they don't want it on their property. They want a buffer. No, they don't. No. Said it says we are respectfully requesting a, any if any restrictions, setbacks, or buffers are needed for our two uses to coexist, they are not placed on our property or they do not result in any cost to being out Meaning the they want them on the uh, right. so conservation the easement side, side thing, to right. say uh, right. we, we respectfully don't want any trails within 25 feet of our property line or 50 feet of the property line to give them that. If they decide right. to do commercial uses all the way back to their, their property, property line. line, I'm just relaying what I was told. Mm -hmm. um, that was I don't know if you feel that that's necessary. I don't know if you feel that that's necessary. All due respect to Mr. Waters, the gear uh, trails and the memorial the open space were all in place before he purchased his property and changed the zoning on it. Mm -hmm. He seems to me that he would have looked into that and his impact on existing uses before he But he's right across the creek from the Cortez Industrial Park. I mean, the city of Cortez had their industrial park and their industrial layout yeah. before the gear or any of that was in place too. So you got you got a mix, yeah. you got a heavy mixed uses right down there in that that very yeah. bottom part. But but I don't think Mr. Waters and and his construction company uh, they're totally separate things. Uh, I mean, I don't see how you're going to how the conservation people are going to ask for any kind of a concession or a buffer or an easement on on him or he's not certainly not going to ask for one from you i wouldn't think but uh, yep. um, the event that he's referring to um there was a series of it was actually a running race this sure. summer sure. they did a series of races that, down there at the gear park and um, it was just a fluke that the morning of the uh one race they were burning the Brush, the, the, the cattails and stuff down in the along the fence line, oh, yeah. and the smoke blew over to where the race was, and it was kind of a yeah. it was you know it's just a little irritation. A one, one time so, event that's yeah, probably not it just re yeah. I mean one day either yeah. side of it yeah. it wouldn't have impacted anybody, but um, mm -hmm. it just so happened that it was when there was a bunch of people out there 
breathing hard. <laughs> and uh, I think it was really the race organizers more that were a little upset than anybody else. But um, it was just happenstance, kind of. That it, that your, it your, your trail, uh, part of it goes right next to Waters' property right now. Yeah, it's within ten feet. Of Up in that couple corner, places. it's yeah. out right, right there. Yeah, in that northeast corner. Yeah. For what it's worth, I, those trails existed before MLC ever got involved in this process. So whether there's a conservation easement on the property or not, those are the trails that Keith's been working with the city on for a long while. I think prior to yeah. the water's purchasing that piece. We hiked back there and hunted ducks back there in high school. So. Constantly cut my fences, so mm. so hopefully it's it's gotten better since we've uh, opened it up to the public. People seem to respect it more now than when it was private. It's kind of just kind of funny that way. Yeah. 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 Regarding uh, the actual buffer that he talked about, I don't I don't really see what buffer there need to be just for hiking and biking on one side of a fence line, um, and at least from our organization's perspective, we never ask anything of people that aren't involved. There's no concern that, at least in MLC's involvement, that there would be any requests on another private property's, uh, private person's property. I, I'm guessing what he's thinking is that if he decides to put in some sort of facility there that does put out a lot of dust or something like that, that the people that are using the trails are going to complain and then you're going to come back to them and say mm. you've got to set your facility off of the property line. Mm. I think that's probably what he's concerned about. Well, I think the setbacks and stuff in the county we've got certain setbacks for any kind of buildings and stuff so he's going to that should all be met out yeah. before anything's ever built on well, that. So. I understand I, well I'm sure Angela has something to say about that too but I, the way I understand it is before he can do anything really heavy industry over there. He's got to reapply for a heavy use. Correct. And he's got to exactly. clear, clear All the All we did was again. change the zoning, that's right. So, he's, so, he's aware of that. So Yeah, and he's aware of that, <coughs> and he's using it now to park some equipment, and I'm not sure exactly what all he's doing. Somebody there, said he was planting... He drilled it. Drilled, drilled did he, some did he kind drill of it all grass right? or yeah. pasture or something yeah. back there. Well, he did s scrape all the topsoil off, yeah. store it, and then he leveled it out, and then he put the topsoil back, back on, on yeah. so... And he has irrigation water now, so yeah. uh, we'll just, I guess, wait and see what he decides to do. But I think what he's he's trying to establish is a precedent that um, you can't come back to him and say, you know, this is not compatible with surrounding mm -hmm. um, yeah. uses. Yeah. He's, he's got zoning, and, and then he's going to have to make application for what he wants to yeah. do to develop yeah. that. Right. Right. And show when, where, and what. So. Because it's not, I think, problem. My intuition tells me that the nursing home and the hospital being uh, about less than three quarters of a mile away, um, it was, they would have more to complain about than people mm -hmm. that are out there only for an hour a day. Yeah. You know? So. Well, I tell you, I, I'm against trying to put a buffer on somebody else's property. I think there's a reason that people live in the city, and I think there's a reason that people live in the county. And the people who live in the, in the county are, want more freedoms. And the people who live in the city want more security and, and more rules and regulations. So I think everybody can have what they want. But I, I would never say that, well, because you want to do something, the other, the other property owner says, well, you've got to live. I've personally been on that bike trail riding along that fence before the dirt was ever turned. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway. yeah. Yeah, before the dirt was scraped, I didn't have a view of any of the city's stuff. And now all their yard lights are in my face. That's, that's how much dirt he took off the top of it. I'm not 
saying one way or the yeah. other, but that's a result. But how of much it. he lowered? He lowered yeah. it. How many feet did he lower that thing? I don't know. I'm guessing 15 feet, 10, wow. 15 feet. It was pretty wow. substantial. Wow. I couldn't see any of the city yards before, and now I see it all. Hmm. So. Of course, you're what? 10, 15, 20 feet off the ground? If I go up on my tower, <laughs> I can see everything. <laughs> <laughs> and when I get my binoculars. Yeah, you, you really <laughs> see a lot, yeah. You, you, remember, I've got a visual line of that nice home out north, too. <laughs> like you don't have a grenade launcher on the All right, well, uh, commissioners, are you ready to make a decision? Yeah, I would move that we grant the... Uh, Rezoning request from for the proposed two lot subdivision owned by Keith Evans at ten six fifty nine Road twenty six Cortez. Second. Motion and a second to approve the rezoning request on Keith Evans property. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Close the public hearing.